Welcome to the results presentation for the Let's Talk Science Fish Market Survey Action Project on CurioCity. This presentation reviews the processes and summarizes the results from the Fall 2016 project. To review, a market survey is a process that can be used to determine if the species of plants or animals used in food products are identified correctly. The species of whole fish, like the ones you see here, are usually pretty easy to identify. However, once fish are processed, it becomes very difficult to identify their species and they may become mislabeled. There are many different potential impacts of mislabeled fish products. The most noticeable impact is the price people pay, as you can see from this example. However, there can also be human health implications as well as environmental implications for fish populations when fish species are incorrectly labeled. In the fall of 2016, students across Canada were asked to collect samples of fish from grocery stores and fish markets. Eight different types of fish were chosen. This included cod, swordfish, sockeye and king salmon, snapper and red snapper, as well as Alaskan and Pacific halibut. We were excited to see that students from many different regions of Canada were able to collect and submit samples of fish. In preparation for DNA barcoding, small tissue samples of the fish were taken by the students and placed into vials from a life scanner kit. The vials were then shipped to life scanner where the DNA was sequenced at the Canadian Center for DNA Barcoding at the University of Guelph. Students also filled out information at the time of sampling using the life scanner app indicating the market name and other key features of each product such as where the fish was purchased and any information on the packaging or signage in the store. At the University of Guelph, DNA from the samples was extracted, amplified using polymerase chain reaction or PCR, and finally sequenced. The resulting DNA barcode sequences were analyzed using the Barcode of Life data systems, which is an online DNA barcode database. By comparing entries from this project to other sequences in the database, the species of each fish sample could be identified. It could then be determined whether or not each fish product was correctly labeled. Finally, the DNA barcode for each sample was sent back through the LifeScanner app, along with the common name and other information about the fish species. In the fall of 2016, 250 samples were submitted by students in the project. Of the 250 samples submitted, DNA barcodes were obtained for 226 of the samples. 16 of the samples could not be used because of errors such as missing information, and 3 were removed because they contained insects instead of fish. This resulted in 207 fish DNA barcodes to study for potential mislabeling. Once the results were in, we learned that of the 207 sequenced fish samples, 43 were in fact mislabeled. 25 samples were labeled with names that aren't supposed to be used in Canada based on the Canadian Food Inspection Agency's fish list, while 18 samples were actually incorrectly labeled fish. These fish were sold under the wrong name, either accidentally or on purpose. That means that overall, approximately 20% of the fish samples had labeling errors of some kind. Let's look more closely at the 43 samples that were mislabeled. 18 samples were truly mislabeled. This means that although the scientific and common names for the fish were on the CFIA fish list, the market name did not match the species name determined through DNA barcoding. As for the other mislabeled samples, 20 had common names that were not on the CFIA fish list and 7 had scientific names that were not on the CFIA fish list. Two samples had neither their common name nor their scientific name on the CFIA fish list. Now let's have a look at an example of true mislabeling that occurred in the project. In this case, the name on the sign or package, what we call the market name, was sockeye salmon. The DNA barcode identified the species as Salmo salar, which is known by the common name of Atlantic salmon. Atlantic salmon and sockeye salmon are two different species of salmon. Atlantic salmon are often farm-raised, and farm-raised fish can have potential environmental impacts, human health impacts, and economic impacts. Given the public perception and market prices of farm-raised versus wild fish, the mislabeling in this case may have been intentional. Other mislabeling occurred with fish that have white flesh, which can be difficult to tell apart once their skins have been removed. 
In these cases, the mislabeling may have been accidental. However, cheaper species such as haddock may have been labeled as more expensive species such as halibut. It is interesting to note that several types of whitefish, including sole, were substituted for cod. There are also a number of instances of what is known as name nonconformity. For example, sample bold H91 had the market name of wild sole and had a DNA barcode match of Lepidopsetta polycystra. Although this name is not on the CFIA fish list, Lepidopsetta polycystra has the common name of northern rock sole, which is still a type of sole. Another example of name nonconformity is sample bold EY9. The market name it had was Atlantic Cod. Its DNA barcode match was for the species Gaddis macrocephalus. Gaddis macrocephalus is known more commonly as Pacific Cod or just Cod. Although the species is on the CFIA fish list and is a type of Cod, it still was not labeled correctly. Other examples of fish on the CFIA fish list that were mislabeled included types of halibut, salmon, rockfish, and sole. As we bring the presentation to a close, we wanted to say thank you to all the students and educators who collected fish as part of the Fish Market Survey Action Project on Curious City. Your contributions have added to our collective knowledge of fish mislabeling in Canada. The Fish Market Action Project will be repeated in the spring of 2017, so educators, log in and go to the link below to sign up if you're interested in receiving a free life scanner kit and collecting fish in the spring, as spaces are limited. Finally, we at Curious City and Let's Talk Science would like to say a big thank you to LifeScanner and the Center for Biodiversity Genomics who helped make this project possible. And don't forget to check out the other interesting articles, videos, and educator resources on Curious City.